Luckily, I gave this at a couple other cons, so it's around online if people want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's nap time. I can empathize. I would be napping if I was not presenting. All right, I don't think there's anything around. All right, so I'll just kick it off. So if anyone wants to, like, ask questions, there's only a couple of us, so go for it. And my mouse isn't working, so we're just going to go this way. All right. So I'm going to start with the intangibles. Um, you're here. You're building your network. Networking does not need to be scary. A lot of people forget that you actually want to make friends with some recruiters. Um, not all recruiters are terrible. Um, and they will move from company to company and they'll help you find jobs. You can use social media. You can establish what you know using uh, GitLab, GitHub, blogs, and anything that you can do in order to know when jobs become available or when somebody says, we're going to be opening a position. The earlier you can get in, the more people you can talk to in a company, the more chance you have of actually getting a role. Now, the resume, this is probably actually you care about. A lot of people just have one and they send it around to everyone and that's usually not effective. What you want to do is have a master resume that has all your job experience, everything you've ever done, especially if you're ever going to apply government because they're like, we need this many years experience and we need you to document every single thing you did in that time period uh, in a specific format as well. Then what you can do is you can take that master one, make a copy of it and trim it down for each one of the jobs. Use their own terms back at them, especially important if you're doing government jobs. Otherwise, if they say we want a security analyst or a threat researcher and your title was analyst one or analyst two, you can kind of shift that around. You can say I was a analyst one performing the responsibilities of a threat researcher. If that's legitimate, do not lie. Uh, cover letter is kind of debatable. Some hiring managers I talk to are like, I always read them. And other ones are like, I pretty much don't read them or my ATS or applicant tracking system strips them off, which is unfortunate. But in my opinion, go for it, write them. They don't have to be long. They do have to be precise to the job though. And it's a really great opportunity if you have anything weird, like I'm shifting positions, I took a year off. You can take a chance to say, you know, in the past year, instead of working full time, I was taking the opportunity to work on my home lab and learn these particular skills. So you can kind of spin it around anything that they might look on the resume. Like, I wonder what happened here or I wonder why this person who's a NETSEC admin is applying for this position, it gives you a chance to kind of spin it. So bottom line up front, especially if you're doing career shifting or took a break, try to say what it is that you want to be doing so that they're not trying to guess. Because sometimes I am hiring for two, three, four different positions and I'm scanning through the resume. So when I see at the top, I'm a network engineer and I really want to have the position on your SOC team because I will be able to analyze all of your traffic. I'm like, okay, so I'm looking for that role. Let me look through for those keywords. White space is amazing. Please don't have teeny tiny eight point font and all scrunched together and use every square inch of the page. Um, if you're reading hundreds of resumes a day, those just kind of get overwhelming. The one thing I always hear a lot is it's gotta be one page. I don't believe that and a lot of people I talk to don't believe it but also don't go crazy. Uh, if it's over two pages, I'm hoping that somewhere on there is like, I worked on putting a rover on the moon and I'm amazing, check me out. Or I've been in this industry for 40 years and I have all of these skills. Uh, so two pages to me is perfectly reasonable, especially if you are giving me good descriptive bullet points that say what you were responsible for and the scope of it. And doxing yourself. A lot of people put their entire home address for some reason and then post it publicly on the internet. I don't understand that. You don't need to do that. Uh, if you want, put a city and state, but most of the time you'll have to do that when you're applying for the job anyway. So why put your whole street address? The basics, these ones you probably already know. Chronological job history. Don't make me figure out why everything is not in the same order. Um, education, there's a cheat for this one. Do they want college, but you didn't finish? Did you take some college? You can actually put in hiatus. Uh, if, you know, I may, if it is a strict requirement that you have to have completed a degree, then that's not gonna work. 
But if my company like prefers people that have gone to college, which I've worked at some places like that, and maybe we'll actually help you pay to finish school and you can't become maybe a certain level within the company without that, and you're willing to finish it, you can always just put on hiatus. The other trick about education is if you are at any company and they will pay for you to get an education, even if you're not like, yeah, I really want a bachelor's for no particular reason, start taking classes anyway, honestly, especially if it's on their dime, just one a semester or whatever, because having that in case that company folds can be a really amazing uh, trick. Don't do it if it's on your own money, but if you can get that for free and it is something relevant to you, it's fun to learn and it might save you when you potentially need to look for another job. Certifications. Uh, I don't believe that they make you more amazing than another person, but it will help you get past the ATS or applicant tracking system. Uh, it will also help some people say, well, I know that you have at least heard base terminology. You have these particular degrees. I know that there's a starting point at which I don't need to train you. Whereas somebody else, I'm like, I don't know necessarily what they did at their company and how much they really let them do or learn. So if you can get a certification, especially paid for by your school or your current employer, go for it. Um, if you can't get a certificate, here's another trick, same as education. If you can take a study program for PMP, CISSP, uh, ethical hacker, whatever it is, you can just put like, have done all the study courses for ethical hacker, willing to take the exam. Apparently, um, if you are actually willing to take the exam, because some companies I've had friends get hired and they're like, okay, we need you to pass it within six months or we're like terminating like you during your probationary period. But if you really have taken all this study and you really are willing to take it, but the test is ridiculously expensive, why not do that? And then when I search your resume for ethical hacker or CISSP, it comes up. You aren't filtered out. For technical skills, on that master resume I was referencing earlier that has like all your things, put in everything. But a couple things with this. You want to list which ones that you have used and which ones you're proficient at. Because maybe you can do some Python scripting but you're not gonna be a Python developer. Make it clear to me so that I know if this job is super heavy in C and you're like, ah, I can sort of mess around with C. It's like, all right, this is not the job for you. And at least we're not gonna waste both each other's time. On that area, that's where you're gonna do a ton of your trimming. If there's not a skill set listed for that job in the job posting, feel free to ditch it. But there are some weird jobs that are like, yeah, we need, you know, have you used Burp Suite and Metasploit? And you're like, okay, I can say like, have take classes in or have used in home lab or whatever, maybe you haven't used it professionally, but at least you can put it there so that it matches for the job posting. All right, um, so here's a couple things that you sometimes forget. If you've volunteered, volunteer at ShellCon, volunteer at your local meetup group for security people, uh, that counts. That's skills you might need to be a manager. Have you done volunteer coordination? That's managing people. Now don't say like you did it professionally, you can say in a volunteer capability for six months out of the year, depending on your organization, it depends how long the volunteer wrangling lasts. I do Diana and that one's actually 11 out of 12 months. So like I manage, you know, 100 volunteers or I do project management for this particular organization or for the local meetup group, I do budgeting. That's a legitimate thing. If it is a real organization and you really did it, you can put down that kind of stuff and that can help show, especially resumes aren't just giving you a new job. You can move within the company. You can be like, I want to be a manager of a team of people. I want to show that I know how to be fiscally responsible, manage people, handle like sourcing, hiring, firing. Volunteer opportunities are a great way to get that exposure if your company is not giving it to you and then use that to leverage yourself into a better paying job. Competitions and awards. Have you won a CTF? That's actually pretty amazing, especially if you're new in the field. It shows that you have a passion for it and you've got enough skills to win somewhere. So list them. And then the last one is keywords. Whatever magical words show up in the job posting, work into your resume. 
Because again, applicant tracking system, I, as the first level person who maybe doesn't actually know the position very well, am looking for a threat researcher. I'm going to look for the word threat researcher. If you were a security analyst one, you're not gonna show up in my search. So say again, security analyst one doing threat research. Again, no lying. So extras, you can do PDF. Some people are like, raw, don't do PDF. Most systems will handle a PDF, it's okay. Um, on the other hand, watch out for like Microsoft Word. If their system doesn't explicitly say we're happy with doc or docx, you're actually probably better off doing a PDF because if you get mangled and I'm trying to read you and everything's all over the place, um, I may just honestly move on to the next resume. Uh, open this to Relo. If the job specifically says something about you have to work in the office or we're not gonna pay Relo, you could always in your cover letter, not the resume, say that you're open to relocation or op that you're open to travel, which could differentiate you or that you're open to self-relocation if you're in the financial ability to do that. And so in the cover letter, that could give you a heads up because if I'm looking at someone who's like, I want no travel, and you know, I said it was 20% travel, and you're like, you know, I love traveling and totally willing to do that for your company. It's like, okay, well, this person's actually gonna enjoy it, so let me go for that. All right, here's one that I need. Uh, honestly, I'm terrible at this. I hate self-promoting. Cause I'm like, okay, well I did this project, yay. And my friends are like, uh, there's nothing of detail and value in this statement about this project. And I'm like, but I don't wanna like, you know, my team did it. It's like, no, you need to take credit for it. So have a friend go through and have them grill you. Your friends are gonna be better at helping you on your resume than you are. And then turn it around and help them too. Cause your friends hear you bitch about your job, right? So they probably actually can say like, well, what about that really big thing where you helped with that incident Oh, well, I was just, you know, like helping document everything, and whatever. Yeah, that's the thing. You actually did some work. So have your friends help you. Um, and then something I meant to put on here, uh, but I didn't, again, is sense of scale. I don't know you. I don't know your company. I don't know what you were doing. So if you just tell me, uh, I manage the land sweeper installation at my work. Okay. How big of an installation was that? Did you inherit it or did you start that project? What was the outcome? Were you able to identify anything, help anything, improve anything? So anything that you're doing, action, scale, outcome. Does that make sense? Because like otherwise that sentence, I'm like, yeah, right, fine, everybody can turn on landscape sweeper for like 100 computers. Oh, you did it for like 10,000 computers. Well, okay, never mind then. Uh, here's a Wooji one. I can't ask you if you're a US citizen. I can't ask you if you can get a clearance. You can hint to me that you're clearable or you can get a clearance by saying, have had a clearance in the past or, um, you know, am ready to get a clearance. If having read all the requirements for various levels of clearances, you, that is legitimate and you could. Um, so you can hint to me that you are clearable and this will accelerate you in some consulting organizations and jobs because if they have a lot of federal government agencies that they work for, then the consultants that they hire or the people that they hire to consult for the government will have to be clearable. But they can't come out and ask you. And government applications, I've actually gotten rejected from a few jobs, even though I do hiring, but I do it in uh, the public sector, not private. There are very precise formats you need to follow and actually the government requires that they list them on the job site. So for example, you're applying to 18F or you're applying to um, Tech Congress, which if nobody's heard of Tech Congress, like they actually hire people for, I think it's $80,000 a year for a one year stint to come advise Congress on not doing dumbass shit. So if that is a thing you're interested in uh, every year, they start in January, um, I think, this year's already been selective, it may be next year, but they will actually have example resume formats for you to follow. So follow those precisely and they really mean it. Don't get cute. All right, so LinkedIn. Uh, I use this very, very heavily. Um, yes, it's spammy. Yes, you get tons of junk mail that you don't want. Um, but honestly, if you're looking for a job, even passively, 
I'm going to recommend you have LinkedIn. Uh, have a specific email address for it if you want. Uh, keep it as vague or as you know detailed as you want. But uh, as a passive method of getting people to reach out, you will get information. You can ignore most of them. Like I honestly don't take it personally if people ignore my messages, especially like because I'm assuming they're getting you know 10, 20 a day, kind of like I do. Please have your face and a very boring photo. Um, I don't want to see you partying. I don't want to see like three people all in the picture together and have to guess uh, who you are. Um, just if you can't afford a professional headshot, like find a blank wall, get a friend, follow all the tips online of like, look slightly past the camera, smile, ta-da, it doesn't need to be glamorous. Perfect, so yeah, get one here. Include all of your jobs, certifications, volunteers, ward, Think of this one like I was saying, have that master resume, have the master resume in LinkedIn, and then choose how much detail you want to put in there. So if you wanna to just toss only the buzzwords in LinkedIn, cool, that's fine. If you wanna actually put the whole thing, that's also fine. Um, one thing about this is the next screen, I think has it. Oh, it's loading. All right, let me see if I've actually got it uh, on my local drive. I don't know how many people have actually seen a LinkedIn recruiter from a recruiter point of view. <laughs> okay, so this is why I keep saying the word buzzword over and over and over again. Uh, when I'm trying to find you to hire you, this is actually what I look at. In here, I can put in whatever I want for job titles whatever I want for location, skills, what companies you've worked at. I can actually target poaching particular people. Um, year of graduation, what schools you attended if I wanna go after certain uh, industries. I can put keywords, in this case I put security analyst. What industry you identify as putting yourself in, whether you recently joined LinkedIn, what spoken languages you have, um, I mean all sorts of Things. In fact, I can even put in first names and last names, which I find personally a little bit creepy. Um, like, I don't know why I want to target all the bobs in the world, but I guess I could if I really wanted to. Um, I can look for military veterans. Uh, I can look current company, past company. Uh, and then somewhere down here that got cut off, I can actually indicate whether you say that you're looking for a full-time job, a part-time job, or a consulting job. So I'm generally looking for people who are looking for full time. But this is exactly why when I search each one of these fields, it's only going to look in that field. So when you have skills, yes, people sometimes are like, I'm going to certify you for llama or turtles or whatever. So your friends are going to put in goofy ones in there. I don't actually look at them, but some of the other people on my team are actually going to put things in there. So do try and have some of the key terms that you want to be identified in there. Uh, and like I said, you don't have to put the whole lovely sentences that are in your resume that you probably rewrite like every six months when you apply for a new job. Just have all the buzzwords and then I'll find you, see your picture, message you. I won't actually dig through all the stuff. But doo -doo. All right, so we'll go back into here. All right. So if you're actually searching, so I told you, have a network. Twitter, GitHub, GitLab, blog, whatever it is you're gonna go to, local meetups, reach out to that network and tell them I'm looking or tell them I'm sort of looking. You know, I'm open to new opportunities. You don't have to be actively looking. You could just be interested. Uh, agencies and headhunters, they're not all terrible. I promise you there are some lovely ones, but please only pick one. So here's what happens. Every time somebody comes in from a sourcer to me, we're paying anywhere from like 10,000 to like $40,000 potentially for that resume if I interview you. And then if I hire you, a percentage of your annual salary for the first year goes to them. Don't pay them. If they ask you to pay them, you don't wanna deal with them. They are making money from me. They should not also be double dipping and making money from you. They should actually want to talk to you and find out what kind of jobs you want. And you should be working with one particular person. If you work with multiple and I see 
that I have paid money and gotten your resume twice, I'm going to be pissed. I am not going to interview you because you are just scattershotting it. You don't actually want this job and everyone's just throwing this resume at you. So uh, it, you can t like they will literally have phone calls with you if they're good. They will want to know what your skills are, what your experience is. They'll help you improve your resume. Don't let them lie on your resume, but they can bulk it up and make it actually like salesy and, and lovely. And then they will try and hunt down opportunities for you. Because again, if you get hired, a percentage of your first year salary goes to them. So events, there's things like this. There's job fairs. There's job fair speed dating, which is kind of creepy and weird. Yep. What do you mean it's not possible? Representing you? Yeah, representing you. When I have looked for jobs, I picked a agency. Now there's lots of people in that agency, but I pick literally one agency. And I talk with that agency and then I pick one headhunting group and I work with that headhunting group but I don't go to two different agencies and two different headhunting groups, and it has worked out for me. How did you know which one you're thinking? Yeah, how did you know So I actually, uh, if they're pretty decent, you can say, hey, I'm interested in having a conversation with you. I don't want to send over my full resume. I will send down a scaled down one and literally have like a very minimalized CV that would not get you a job anywhere. Take that minimalized CV, send it to them and say, hey, I'd love to have a discussion with you. And you know, if you know we get along well, I'll send you my full CV. And if they're willing to talk to you, you can just be like, hey, what companies do you generally work with? What range of you know, salaries are you able to get for my position in my area? I'm really interested in you know, partial remote work. How successful have you been with that? They should be willing to have like a 15, 20, maybe even 30 minute call for you, with you for free and discuss your slim resume, what you have done and what you're looking for. And if they're not willing to have a conversation with you, that's your first indicator that they suck. If they're willing to have that conversation with you and you send over the resume and they're willing to kind of talk through it again with you, or at least go back and forth and email, they're probably pretty decent. And if they answered all of those questions, like, hey, how many people do you tend to place on average? What average salary for my role do you tend to place? I would roll with them. And Give them a time frame. Say, I'm going to work with you for the next six months, nine months. And then be like, you didn't find me anything. I, you are no longer representing me. Please do not. And like, put it in writing. Please don't send my resume out anymore. You are not representing me anymore. And then if they do do that and you catch them, you can actually get them for that. Because you have specifically told them you don't have the right to my data anymore. But so you can have a headhunting agency that has multiple humans in it, and you can talk to lots of people about agency. You can have a um, recruiting agency and talk to them. You can talk to as many sourcers as you want. Sourcers are kind of, they only make money if you're paid. They don't make money when they send a qualified resume. That's kind of the difference. And I know that's kind of weird. Sourcers don't get paid to hand me a resume. They'll hand me a ton of resumes and hope that one works out. Whereas like headhunters, if I'm looking for a C-level or a director or a VP, may literally get paid to hand me a resume, whether or not I hire you. Oh yeah, sourcers, work with as many sourcers as you want till the cows come home, all of them, because they're just handing them out uh, to anyone they think might hire you. They will literally, they sound exactly like an agency, but they tend to work for C-levels. And so how a head, and you can like ask them like, hey, what companies do you work with and how do you work? And when they say companies come to us to fill a specific position, that's more of a headhunting agency than a regular agency. Regular agencies work with a variety of companies on all of their roles. So you can be like, you know, what type of roles do you fill? And if they're like, oh, we fill regular engineers all the way up through C-level, it's an agency. If they're like, oh, we tend to fill VP, director, CISO, that's going to be more of a headhunting group. Because I literally go to them and I'm like, I need you to find me a CISO. Go. 
And they'll do like speed dates for me and then hunt down people and bring them in. So would you classify uh, security airline level one? A headhunter would not go for okay. level ones. That would be your agencies might and your sorcerers definitely will. Okay. So. so, but yeah, so the sorcerers, as many dime a dozen, fire out your resume to all, as many of them as you please. So, but yeah, uh, speed dating is kind of awkward, but it can be super effective. Uh, hiring happy hours, events like that. And I think I'm now over time is the next speaker here. I will, I will stop. Uh, so the, everybody probably knows all of these except for possibly states are required to have an employment list where all agencies within the state have to list. So you may want to take advantage of that in addition to the regular listing boards. And then kind of my last point is you're allowed to follow up on people. So if you put in a resume somewhere and you haven't heard anything, start using your OSN skills. Go on LinkedIn, go on Twitter, go everywhere and be like, you know, hey, and, and not after like one week, like wait, two weeks. Be like, hey, you know, two weeks ago I applied. I haven't heard anything at all. Could you check, you know, that I'm in the system? Or could you tell me if that position's been filled? That person may not be able to get you the answer, but they should try and at least get you the answer. If I get reached out to on LinkedIn, even if it's not in my department, I'll go find out that answer for someone. Um, so it's not, now if you keep asking them over and over again, then you're creepy. But if you just go through, maybe find the email of, you know, their HR, people internally um, or LinkedIn, or you use social media or your own personal network to find out if the role's been filled. Uh, that's totally fine. Ask once via one method. If not, try and ask via another method. Then kind of let it, let it go. Some companies are rude and just don't tell people. So hopefully these were somewhat useful tips. These will all be up on Twitter uh, and you can always ask me additional questions later.